Hello, everybody. I am so excited to see so many new faces. I know that many of you are from a couple of parishes in um, Indiana, Pennsylvania. So we're excited to not only cook with you, but we'd love to meet you too um, and get to know you a little bit. Um, but for today, I wanted to welcome you to Kind Soups. You know that we're cooking a lemony white bean soup with greens today. You can The recipe has it with ground turkey, but if you want to make that um, vegetarian, you are welcome to just leave out the turkey, or you can even replace it with mushrooms if you have some mushrooms and you like that. That's considered a good replacement. Uh, for the meat in this recipe. The way we cook is really kind of um, mellow and you get to tailor what you're cooking to your likes. So if you don't like cilantro and a recipe says cilantro, figure out what you like or ask us for ideas because we are always happy to share. This is one of the fun things about cooking with each with other people in your kitchen. Um, you get to like say, you know, I don't really like that balsamic vinegar. What do you suggest I use? And people will have some ideas and we learn from each other. And we're excited to learn from you guys um, and share our kitchen time with you today. For now, I'd love to introduce to you one of our guest chefs, Carol Weil, who's been cooking with us for th the whole three years that we've been doing Kind Soups. Um, and she picks out really great vegetarian and vegan recipes. This one was a little bit of a stretch, but you'll be making yours today vegetarian, right, Carol? Absolutely, yes. Well, welcome. You, you are welcome to take over. I will unpin myself and you can get us started. Okay, thank you. And good evening, Indiana, Pennsylvania. Thank you all for joining. Hello. <laughs> this is really exciting. We hope that this is the first of many uh, evenings together and that you enjoy this um, tonight as much as we always do. Um, Deb said this earlier, for some of you who are on early, our uh, ongoing motto is soup is very forgiving. Soup is a wonderful thing because it's so nourishing and warm, but it's also so um, uh, flexible and, and, and accepting of, of different spices and different ingredients. And we always have soups that you can make vegetarian. My family uh, is vegetarian, so we um, always look for that option. And uh, you, know, you can always add ground turkey if you want or uh, pork if you want or wh whatever suits you and your uh, interests and, and needs and um, it's just lovely to be able to cook together. Um, so I like this recipe um, because it um, particularly for a vegetarian it still has a lot of protein the white bean um, and it has those fresh greens and some um, really nice flavoring. Um, as Deb said the lemon just adds a real brightness and a kind of a, a, a pungent um, tanginess that is is great. So um, uh, so that's, that's my favorite thing about this recipe. But, um, again, if you, um, while I'm, um, going through things, if you have any questions, um, either, um, put, uh, put it into the chat or just, um, unmute yourself and, and cause I don't, I don't tend to look at the chat while I'm cooking, so I may not see it. So just unmute yourself and, 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 um, you know, raise your voice. This is a communal event here. Um, so I'm going to start, I know people may be at various stages of where they, are in terms of slicing and dicing. I had a chance to do my slicing and dicing earlier. Um, so I have my uh, onions and garlic um, all ready to put um, into my pot. I'm gonna first put in my oil. And um, at, at, at this point, cause we've been cooking soup for so long, I don't usually, um, full disclosure here, I don't measure out my oil. I just sort of eyeball it cause I know my pot and I know how much I'm making. So. Um, if you're Carol, more comfortable measuring, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. No, well, Carol, if I could add something for the folks who are joining us new, and I'm sure you guys you could on your own, so this is not there. a surprise. Sorry. Um, this is probably not a surprise to many of you, but when we triple these recipes, the amounts look ridiculous. So a half cup of olive oil is what the recipe would call for, but we all know you're just going to cover the bottom of your big soup pot with oil. You know, yeah. a little bit of depth, but not too much. Um, and also we've learned that when you add your onions and you're sauteing them up, 
that's a great time to add a little bit of salt. And that's going to bring out the moisture from the onions and let them cook down a little bit more before they start to really um, burn. So cover your the bottom of your soup pot with oil. If that's a half a cup, great. If it's less than that, you're still on the right track. Put in your onions after the oil gets hot and then add a little bit of salt and keep stirring them around. Yeah, I think the expression is that onions like to sweat, right? They yeah, uh, and so the salt really helps them sort of uh, get get the moisture out and become more flavorful. So, absolutely, I'm gonna um, I'm throwing in my onions and garlic right now, and um, I, you you may want to um, let your oil get to a certain temperature. Mine mine was already there. It's not super. Um, super hot so that it's it's like popping when you add them but maybe sizzling a little bit um, so carol, the directions the directions don't say anything about the garlic you added them with the onion and the carrots i did sorry oh, i may have done that on my but yeah i just i was wondering if they add it later or they just leave it out entirely <laughs> huh. it says it's right. to add it with the um tomato paste and ginger Oh, my bad. All right. Sorry. I added it with the onions, but you, um, it, I, I think it's fine either way. I, I had chopped them together. So I, um, but uh, always good to follow the directions. So, um, And you should, if you if you've added them, you should now be hearing like a pleasant little pop, uh, not not a sharp pop, but a nice, nice little sizzle pop of of them cooking. And don't worry, I always think it looks so oily down there, but um, you know, even though I did not add half a cup, as Deb pointed out, but you're going to be adding a lot of other stuff and no more oil, so you need that to get everything, keep everything from burning. Carol, when do you add your mushrooms? Um, I'm actually not adding mushrooms in here, um, but I, um, you could. I wouldn't add them right. I would add the carrots next and before the mushrooms because the carrots are going to take longer to cook down. Um, but the mush mushrooms are, are kind of soft. So yeah. maybe um, when you add the kale or or your whatever greens you're adding, you could add the mushrooms. Do you usually saute them separately or you just let them cook in there? Um, I would uh, I would throw them in. Yeah, they're they're very moist and they'll they'll boil down. By the way, when you add something like kale or the, or the collard greens, your pot will like suddenly uh, you will have you'll think, oh my gosh, I have no room. But the but the water in them, the moisture in them um, evaporates, and you'll get more room as they cook down. So you may have to add them bit by bit. It's one of the things you learn when you cook, you know, huge amounts. I'm just going to show for those. I've got my onion and, and my garlic, which I guess was a boo-boo, but it'll be fine. And um, my carrots in there now. And they're... Boy, my pot looks completely different than yours. That's oh, yeah? I make big pieces. You're uh -huh. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like chunky soup. So, you know, again, as we say, it's, it's very individual. Yeah. And... Um, I uh, I like it to be chunky. <laughs> so Deb, do you want to show your pot just so we can see? Yeah, I need one minute and then I will. Okay. Oh, another thing that we uh, often do with with this uh, project is we, um, so I always use veggie broth because I'm making a vegetarian soup and you have all these vegetables that you've chopped and, you know, they have skins and they have ends, hard ends and things. I throw that into a pot with hot water and I boil it up and that's um, usually the basis for my veggie broth. And this time, because it was a lemon 
and flavored soup, I actually added um, a half a lemon that I used um, this morning for other reasons. And so now my broth has like a lemony. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yours is much more even. Um, beautiful. Beth. Anyway, so my broth actually has a bit of a lemony flavor, which I'm really excited about because I think it'll make it, you know, a little bit more, uh, it'll, it'll, it'll enhance that, the lemonness of the soup. <laughs> I love that. And I actually um, used, because I too, like Carol, make um, broth each week. And this time I cooked those veggies down along with the dried white beans. So I'm oh. kind of excited that I've kind of infused all the flavors of this soup into the bean too. So yeah. if you guys, any of you who are new to kind soups want to get into this swing of doing this kind of more frequently, consider or to ask us about if you haven't done it otherwise, making broth out of all your leftover veggie clippings and cuttings. Yeah, and Deb actually taught me, I now keep a plastic um, Ziploc bag in the freezer. So anytime I'm cutting up an onion, I just toss into that plastic bag in the freezer, well, you know, the bottom of the onion or whatever. If I'm making Brussels sprouts, I chop off the end. But if I'm cutting string beans, I cut any any of your, you know, what you would normally compost or, or throw out or, uh, you know, the ends of the cauliflower, the ends of the broccoli, whatever. And I save it all and it makes delicious uh, environmentally sound broth. <laughs> and cheap, right? And cheap, right, 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 right. Another thing we use that is is less cheap, but still uh, um, not terribly expensive is this Better Than Bullion. It comes from Costco. It's a huge, huge one. Um, and you can add this to boiling water um, and they have all sorts of flavors. This is the um, veggie one, but they have like a chicken flavor and a beef flavor and a um, and and they're very uh, quick, quick broth making uh, products. Um, okay, so after carrots, uh, I'm about ready to add my kale, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to give a quick um, look, and if you guys, wherever you are in your kitchen, if you're cooking, everybody doing okay? Give me a thumbs up. Everybody okay? Anybody need a little mm -hmm. bit of help on anything, or we're all good? Um, yeah, I was wondering with the, uh, with this, with the herbs, um, if you have the, uh, parsley on hand, yeah. the dry parsley, how much of the, would that throw the recipe off? How much of the dry parsley, um, the fresh parsley would equal the, the dry parsley? How much of the fresh would equal the dry? I think that it said to use a cup, um, of, so three cups, which was crazy a lot. Um, you're yeah. eating fresh, Cheyenne? Do you have one bunch of, of parsley? I don't, no. I'm kind of listening to the chat and then making it afterward, kind of looking, just kind yeah. of listening to the steps and then doing it later. I think you've got a lot of room to make your own decision on that parsley. It is not going to make or break the flavor on this um, soup. So, you know, add like a, a bunch chopped up. Um a cup, you know, I don't know. It, you're going to be fine. I don't think the parsley is the main flavor. Lisa, you finished yours already, right? Uh, yes, I, I, I finished it and I've made it before several times. Um, and the parsley will add um, just a different kind of flavor, but I also added in dill, fresh dill. Yeah, I was reading dill, Cheyenne. That's a better one, I think. It gives it a, a more distinct flavor. So if you're going to use parsley, don't overdo it, um, and you'll be fine with whatever. But dill and cilantro seem to get really good uh, reviews on the website that we took this recipe from. Okay, thank you. Michelle? For those who are further ahead of me, did you, you really use six cans of beans? I'm opening and rinsing mine. I was thinking about maybe opening and rinsing five. I did use six cans of the white beans. And yeah, I used two pounds of dried, so that's a lot of beans. It is. Okay, thank you. I um, think that also if you're adding turkey, you can probably add fewer beans because, you know, that you have this other flavor um, profile in there. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, um, I'm adding six beans as well, six cans of beans. All right, Marge and Joan Bish, I think you both were going to say something. I wanted to know if you really drained the beans, Lisa. Oh, Marge, you know me. Um, yes, in, in fact, I, 
I did drain the beans. I think because they're they were it's salted. They were in a salt solution, and so um, I'm always a little mindful of adding in things that have additional salt. Um, oh, I try that. to keep mine on the lower salt side by using the low salt um, better than bouillon. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, I did rinse because of that. You can buy the canned beans, the various, the varieties of beans that are unsalted. Um, the okay. giant had them on sale and they were salted. So boom, they got washed. Okay. That answers my question. Thank you. Oh, and Joan, you know, did you have a question? Yes, I yeah. did. What all do we have in the pan now? We have onions in there, garlic and carrots and the oil, right? So far in the oil, that's right. Onions, no garlic and carrots. That's that's what you start out with. Yep. Right. Yeah, that's what you start with. Yeah, unless you're me and you make a mistake. But unless you're a mistake. Carol, and you're allowed to make a mistake because soup is very forgiving. Teresa, okay. did you have a question? Yeah, I do. Um, so I was I think dried beans are better than canned beans. So I did I took the beans yesterday morning and put them in water and heat it, boil them. And then I drained the water, put them in cold water and they've been sitting around since yesterday. Fantastic. So can I just, I mean, I, I, should I wait till they're soft? And when I cook them, should I put some of these ingredients hi, in? Hi, Teresa. <laughs> Karen just said hi to you, Teresa. Oh, hi, 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 Karen, nice to see your name. <laughs> hi, Teresa, I'm driving, so I'm not. I, I'm not oh, cooking at the I moment. Don't, you know, share your, your uh, uh, picture then. Anyway. So, so yeah, I would put, you know what? Taste your beans, the ones that have been soaking for 24 hours. Take, give it a pinch or a taste and uh -huh. see how hard they are. And then if they're still quite hard or at least plenty hard, put them in relatively early. The minute you put your broth in, put your beans in. Um, okay, all right. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't cook them until they're soft before I put them in with the soup. I can just you don't have to, as long as you're willing to cook your soup itself until your beans are soft. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. and then... Um, as far as the herbs, they have to be fresh. You can't use dried. You can absolutely use dried. And I'll tell you the little secret. Yes. Uh -huh. You can do whatever you want. And the okay. herbs are not going to make this recipe. Okay. Well, the so lemon is going to make um, this recipe. I have, I have some, yeah. but I don't have like... It's right. like three cups or something. That's it's crazy. And especially in the yeah. winter, that's a lot, right? Yeah, in the so, summer, um, you might have it outside. Don't yeah, worry I would, about I'd it. Have basil so you you put in whatever you feel like, and you're going to taste your soup towards the end. You're going to okay. put a little extra lemon in. And you might even want to put on your labels, uh, reheat with a little bit of more herbs, fresh herbs, and sir, and lemon juice. And that way, okay. the family that gets it knows they're going to brighten up that flavor with a little herb and a little lemon when they reheat the soup to eat, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. Back to you, Carol. No, it's all good. I, I'm wondering if people had questions about the cumin and whether to use cumin seed or ground. I'm not sure it said, did it? It said teaspoon. So I guess that usually means, oh, it does say ground. Yeah. I actually, I have both. And so I like the the little flakes. So um, I was just going to say, you know, again, on the forgiving theme, if you um, bought seeds or if you have seeds. Um, I'm huh? What's that? Oh, 9630, nine mom. <laughs> Okay, and I'm just going to temporarily mute you while you're talking to somebody else, I think. Okay, Carol. Oh, sorry. Um, so I was just going to say, if you have um, uh, whatever kind of cumin you have will work, but I, I tend to like the, um, the more sprouty ones. It just adds, it, it's that, it, it gives you that like tang of, of, um, of cumin. Uh, and so are, are people up to the to tomato paste and cumin point? So we're supposed to put the cumin and the, and the tomato paste in now? Yeah, and the ginger. Okay, my husband went to grab my tomato paste because I forgot it. Can you believe it? <laughs> That's okay. It'll actually be fine without it. Okay. You can have a can of a uh, tomato puree or something, you could add well, a little of that, but you, you you don't need it. It'll be delicious. 
Okay, he's close. He'll be right back though. So. Um, <laughs> the, the ginger, should we like just dice it up or slice it or? Um, I sort of shredded it because it's hard. I, I tried to grate it like, like they said, and it kind of came out a little mushy. So it's it's mushy grated, and then I and then because it was like very stringy, I chopped it a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I think okay. mints mints will be the closest if if um Joan, you're looking for how to do it. You really want to grind this thing up pretty well so it just kind of goes away. The flavor remains, but it's not a texture that people are going to be eating. Okay. Right. I'm, I'm going to. To, um, do a little show and tell. I have a ginger grater. Um, oh, that I need one of those. Well, look at fantastic. that. Fantastic. Wow. Um, and so, and you can also grate garlic with this. Um, it's all metal and the, the little teeth are yeah, here. Yeah. And so you just grate it. You can do it either way. And then it falls down to the lower part of it. Um, oh, okay. I also have this like awesome, awesome tool. This may be harder to find, but with the internet, what the heck, we can probably get just about anything. This was purchased in Japan. It is a little metal rake that you can scrape the ginger or garlic grater with. Oh, wow. So it helps clean out the little teeth. Um, it's also good on other graters. So that's my little show and tell for today. These are Love that. Awesome. Um, I use them a lot when we're making soups and when I cook other things too. You know what, Lisa, while you're um, on, could, if you wanted to do two minutes of research and put that in the chat for us, that you could be a uh, influencer right now. How about that? Yeah. Uh, okay, let me um, take a look. Thank you so much. Uh, so I just added my salt and a tablespoon of salt seemed like a heck of a lot to me. So I added about half and I, I, I kept my salt out. I may add more later, but I would just say that seems like an awful lot of salt, um, especially if you have beans that have salt in them and especially if your broth is going to be salty. So, um, so you guys have all been cooking your whole lives. So this is probably not news to you, but what we've kind of come to realize, but um, besides taking into account how much salt your canned beans might have, you also take into account what kind of broth you're using. So if you're using homemade broth and you don't really put salt in it, that's one thing. If you're using a, a packaged broth and it has plenty of salt in it, this is a time where you really minimize, like Carol's doing, um, how much salt she's gonna add. And you can always add salt at the end. How much lemon would you recommend putting in? How much lemon juice? I think I did the the juice of two lemons in mine, Hannah, and I was quite happy. And I, and knowing how happy I was with that burst of lemon, um, I am going to put on my label that when people heat it up, they may want to just squeeze a little lemon and chop up a tiny bit of cilantro or dill. Does that help? I hear lots of happy cooking noises in there. So I'm gonna assume everyone is doing great, but again, keep any questions coming. I'm I'm at the point where I'm adding my beans. So, and I, I also drain them. I, I heard before there was a question about that. Um, I just, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what they put in these things, but I usually try to do dry beans that just didn't have time this time. But if I buy canned beans, I, I tend to drain it. Unless I need the extra liquid, in which case I add it. <laughs> If you guys can hear me, I wanted to share one of the um, tips that was given on this recipe um, that somebody wrote in and, and suggested. 
You never need to be without that pesky one tablespoon of tomato paste. And we've talked on this on these calls before about freezing them in a small um, ice cube tray. But here's another kind of fun idea. Uh, they write in, open a can at both ends. You know, these little cans, open it at both ends, remove the lid from one end, using the other lid, push out the approximately one tablespoon of paste. Slice it off and lay it on a sheet of wax paper on a small cutting board or a flat tray. Yeah. And keep doing that until you've used it all. So you just keep pushing from the bottom, the lid that you had uh, loosened but not removed and pushing it up and cutting it off and laying it down on wax paper, wax paper, wax paper. Um, and then store it in a zipper bag with all the air taken out. And you've got little rounds of tomato paste to take out every Monday when your soup calls for one tablespoon of tomato paste. Hope it yeah. helps. You can also, they have it in a tube. You can buy yeah. it in a tube. So you can, that's another way to not deal with the pesky little cans. Yep. That, that's right. a lovely idea. But for those of us who finally learned why my mother used to yell at me, be careful, you don't want to cut yourself and had to get a special <laughs> can over because I sliced, sliced open a finger. That won't work because the cans don't fit back in. They that is rid. true. That is true. I also, I, I, buy, I buy it in jars. That's good too. I love that. Yeah, Where'd you get that? Is that I buy, um, I buy it online at a place called Vitacost. I think they might also have it at Whole Foods, but. You know, and it's not, really you know who has um, large jars? Last. Sorry. Tomato paste and red pepper paste are sold in bigger jars in all the um, international markets. Yeah, but I really, I it's not cheap, but I really like it. And it's just, um, it's less wasteful. Yeah. And how long does it last in the jar in your fridge? I don't know, but um, I don't. I mean, like months? It doesn't go bad in a week or anything like that, does no, it? No, it's kind okay. of like tomato sauce, you know? Okay. That, yeah. yeah. I'm actually making mine with turkey and it's it's really slowing down the process a lot for me. I don't know how you all are doing. What is slowing down? Um, the, the cooking of the ground turkey is slowing down my progress. So Lisa has found us a grater. Thank you, Lisa. It's a ginger grater. Yeah. Also great for, it's in the chat or it's under notes. I don't know how everybody finds ginger that. Ginger grater, look at that. Yeah. Oh, is it in there? How did you find that, Carol? Is it where in the chat notes, was? It said, I got a something in the chat that said Lisa wanted to collaborate with me on notes. And then oh, so I- Oh, fantastic. If any of you want that, just accept Lisa's note. And that is fantastic. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. We've got a few new names that have popped up. Janine, welcome. If you have any questions, don't be shy. And for all of you who are new to us, come back any Monday. We cook new soups every week and you are welcome to deliver your extra soups to the parish where you'll be delivering your extra soups tomorrow. So this is something that we've spoke um, spoken to um, <laughs> I'm, I'm forgetting his name. I'm so sorry, Richard, I think. Um, and oh, and you guys are welcome to donate soups every, next Tuesday morning and every it's Tuesday simple. thereafter. We also, and maybe people on the call can share who they're going to be donating their soups with that isn't a food um, assistance provider. I know I'm going to ha um, hang on to a quart 
a, a cord for uh, my niece who had a baby 10 days ago and to a close friend of mine who just had some breast cancer surgery. So those count too, as far as kind soups. We're trying to spread kindness here, not just um, uh, soups and food for people who um, are food insecure, but also kindness. So when I report my soups next week, I'll have a bunch that I'm going to take to a food assistance provider, but I'll also have a couple of quarts that I'm going to give to people who I know who I think could use a little extra, a little love in the form of soup. Yes, I have a friend who just had knee replacement surgery and is not standing to cook uh, much, if at all. And so I'm going to give her some along with the rest that I bring to a no. And and the person with the knee replacement just got a butternut squash soup yesterday. I heard that today. <laughs> Mutual friend. <laughs> what? We're eating on camera. Oh. Boy, that ginger grater is going to make a great stocking stuffer for uh, Passover. <laughs> what do you think these are? I don't know. A lot of gingers. That's what I'm wondering. I don't know if we're actually, if they can see us, though. So. I don't know. Yeah, we can see you. Oh, you can? Yeah, welcome. Wonderful. Hi. We were just curious <laughs> about the Zoom, but boy, this soup is delicious. Oh, good. Well, you know what? You're free to make it anytime, um, and you can join us for every other soup that we make. We've had a really good track record. We uh, The soups we pick out to make together are almost always good. Um, Marge will tell you the borscht was no good, but she... she was... <laughs> Marge will not tell you that because Marge refused to make borscht. So okay. I'm sure it was as good as any borscht I've ever tasted. Very generous <laughs> of you. So anyway, join us anytime. We find great recipes. It's a lot of fun to cook together and we're glad you're checking it out tonight. Is it always the same information to log in and the uh, same yeah. time? You can just go, yes, it's always Mondays from five to six. It's always the Zoom, but if something were to change, you'll wanna keep that website page handy and that's where you get the recipe too. So, um, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Do your parishes have relationships with particular um, uh, homeless groups or shelters or organizations that need food, or is this? Like I think they're going to use them in house at the um, parish. Isn't that right? Oh, Anybody know? Uh, no, uh, they're going to. We have um, our organization in town called Chevy Chase Community Center. Mm -hmm. And we're going to give most of it to them ah. tomorrow. And then we also, uh, depending on how much we have, uh, we have the IUP students that we minister to. So oh, yeah. the Catholic Student Association, we're going to give some to them. And then also there is a pathway shelter in Blacklick, yes. which does That's not funny. have very many residents right Please now. But Devin. we um, will also give to them. Depending oh, on how yeah. much we get back. <laughs> yeah, Cynthia, thank you for sharing that. Um, sure. If you want, I can put right on the website for people who might want to cook on other Mondays, those addresses. So it doesn't have to get collected first by the parish and then delivered. It can just go directly. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I can check that out and then get back to you. As I'm going as... to put my email address in the chat for you, okay? Okay, that, thank yes, you. that would be great. Okay, thank you so much. And where are you located in Pennsylvania? I know it's Indiana, but I don't know where that is. Uh, Indiana, Pennsylvania, we're, um, oh, about 60 miles from Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, so you're west then. Where, oh. yeah, where are you located? We're right outside D.C. We're outside D.C. Oh. I have a sister who's in Philly. Maybe northwest, yeah, northwest yeah, of west you. Of that. Yeah. <laughs> And I think we've got a New Yorker on the call today. I think I saw Hannah before. So you can do this from anywhere, Cynthia. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is really good. This is the first I've heard of, of this. 
All right. Well, come back often and tell whoever you know. <laughs> really, we can do this from anywhere and help your local community. So we're so excited. Yeah. You know, and if they add borscht to the recipe list again, you can always go back to the archives and find better recipes to cook. <laughs> it's all on your web page, and is the web page kind soup? Kind, kind, kind well, works. Kind works, but you can also just Google kind soup as one word, not plural, S O U P, kind soup, and you'll get um, just the kind soup projects, and and it's it's um, chronological, so you'll come up to the the next one to come if you do it that way. All right, my my turkey is finally done, so I'm I'm moving forward. How's everyone else doing? Doing great. I don't even know what am I supposed to be doing at this point? I've given up. I'm supposed to be simmering, right? I'm simmering. I am, I am simmering. I, I've got everything in except the. Um, I just added the greens, and so I'm gonna. Uh, I've got everything but the herbs and the lemon juice at this point. But I didn't add turkey, so that you know that's easier. Well, nor nor did I. So let's talk for a second about how much three bunches of kale are. I have no idea what three bunches of kale are. I know you didn't mean three bags of kale, but <laughs> I I put in a whole bag. I so put in a large bag. Yeah, you can use a lot. Yeah. And large, that's, as you can imagine, a comment on the website spoke exactly to that question and guess what the answer was hey soup is very forgiving so right and add, and add in if your bag has six ounces and and uh, they ask for seven it's going to be six don't worry about it Hello, My bag has, I, i've got 12 ounces and 12 ounces seems like a lot i think you're going to be okay start with eight and see what it looks like yeah yeah my rule with the greens is usually just to add however many fit before the pot gets too stuck. Yeah. And you can keep pressing down. Yeah. I actually had 12 ounces also, and I put all of mine in, and it seems to have cooked down. Okay. Yeah. They yeah. Cooked yeah. Down. Like I added, I think, 32 ounces, and they're cooking down. I'd like to talk to something else for those actually, of you who Actually, hold on, Marge. Okay. Hold on. I want to introduce Father Richard. Who is uh, who organized this event for the folks in Indiana, Pennsylvania today? Mm -hmm. And I want to thank him publicly for connecting with us and making this project something that his groups are doing. Um, and give him a few minutes to uh, say whatever he'd like to say. Sure. Uh, sorry, Emily, I was caught out into the hospital, so I apologize. No need. Um, no need to. All right. <laughs> Um, but uh, just thank you. You know, it's it's a Linton project um, for our parishes um, here in Indiana, and uh, we're hoping to help. You know, the less fortunate. One of the great pillars of Advent, I'm sorry, Lent is almsgiving, so it's a great way for us to give back to our community. So it's a pretty exciting initiative. We hope to have uh, several quarts of um, of this soup to distribute on Tuesday. Aww, that's so lovely. Yeah, well, welcome. And you know, we've mentioned already. Sorry, is someone talking? I don't mean to step over anybody. <laughs> okay. Well, well, thank you for that. We're excited that this is your Lenten project. And we've been talking about how you had said that people are welcome to cook in the future and that the same yes. places. The, the, although actually Cynthia may give us the direct addresses for where people can donate for future weeks in uh, your community. So you don't uh, have to organize collecting it and delivering it if you want okay. to do it that way, whichever works for you. Sure, sure, sure. Fantastic. What I was going to say earlier is for those of you who haven't cooked in the past or haven't cooked with us in the past, we have to freeze our soup. We freeze them in cold containers. I don't know if you're doing that because you're going to serve it tomorrow, but before we donate, we freeze. And that means you have to let the soup cool. So don't you don't have to keep the, the pot on for as long as it says to cook your greens because your greens will continue to cook and wilt as the soup cools. Oh, that's so much better. The vent went off. I'm also making vegetable broth at the same time. So. Yeah. Thank so you. Just, That's so yeah, helpful. bear that in mind. Yes, it's not as bad with kale as with spinach. Spinach, you have to be really careful. Spinach, just put it in and turn off. Yeah. So I, I, um, I just wanted to demonstrate with the, um, 
I'm putting in a whole big thing of dill, but all these like little stemmy things you don't want in the soup, I'm taking them out. I'm, I'm you know, taking off the good fro frondy parts that are gonna go in the soup. And then for the stems, I'm saving them for my homemade broth. I'll just um, put them in my little zippered thing. And then the next time I need broth, they'll go in the broth and they will make the broth so delicious. So it's a really nice way to use up stuff like that. Now, are you putting a mixture of herbs in yours? Like are you using parsley and dill or just dill? I'm just doing dill. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. um, but you, I, you could absolutely do a mix. The peach Father rose. Richard, are you still on there? Yes, I'm still here. Hi, it's Maureen McKee. I don't have faith on there because I couldn't get it. So I'm just invisible. Um, this would actually be a nice thing to do maybe once a month, even after Lent. Okay. You know, I mean, you can never, you know, the give. The need is always there. The, the need is always yeah, there. Yeah, the need is right. always there. So I don't know, maybe it's something to think about if, if there's enough people willing to do it. Sure, exactly. <laughs> Well, and the other thing, I love that idea. And the other thing is about there being enough people willing to do it. You know, whoever cooks, that's how much soup you get to give away. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't really need, well, we don't ask people. That's true. Yeah, yeah we don't ask people true. to tell us in advance. And I'm always excited to see who shows up. And it's always, you know, some people who cook all the time and somebody who I haven't seen for a while. So honestly, you're all welcome to come and go as you can and donate as you can. Sounds good. We cook twice a month. We also cook on the we cook on the second and fourth Sundays as well. I you know my group does. So yesterday there were three of us on the call, but I know at least six people cooked, maybe more, because a bunch of people contacted me. So we round up the soup and we donate it in one place rather than everyone driving in different directions. Yeah. Yeah, Marge has a congregation that she is um, in charge of and she's created her own little empire um, and they cook a lot of soups, I'm here to tell you. But sometimes, like she just said, I only see three people on the call, but sometimes, you know, they'll deliver 10 people's worth of soup. So um, we try to cook a big pot of soup um, every Monday, there's a couple of other congregations in this area, including Marge's, that cook on their, their own kind soups and deliver using our food assistance providers and reporting into us. And, you know, we'd love for you guys to do whatever works for you. It's fun to get to know new people in new places and learn new recipes. And also sometimes when there are soups like borscht that are cooked, you could use one of these other recipes instead. <laughs> Good point. Uh, a note I'm about you, Marge. <laughs> a note about today's soup. When I made my batch, it made about six and a half quarts. Um, so I put them in quart containers, and they're in the refrigerator, cooling down before I put them into the freezer. Um, I know our protocol here, you'll find the steps on the soup making to label the soups, which we always do. Um, and if you're having a little bit of a hard time, we, we label our soups, we print out, I, I print out the sheets on um, eight and a half by 11 white paper. And then I put all the information on, I cut them out and use um, large strips of tape to put them on the container. Are you telling, having, you're not telling them about the beautiful pictures that you take with gorgeous, colorful things behind it that refer to some of the ingredients or the country that the recipes come from. Sometimes on Tuesday morning, I get a little crazy before I deliver my soup to Marge's house. <laughs> and um, it's my creative outlet and a way for me to sort of enjoy. I enjoy cooking, but making things look a little pretty and to have a photo um, that I can sort of remember the soup that um, I made and shared. Deb talked earlier about who you share your soups with. Um, most of my soups go to um, our county, um, the Up County Food Distribution Center. 
I also um, try to deliver a soup to my oldest friends who are 95 years old. And um, there's not a lot of cooking that goes on in that household. So um, homemade soup is always appreciated. Um, I also um, will often give a quart of soup to my next door neighbors who are both have full-time jobs, two children are going in many different directions. Um, but always have time to sort of help me out when I need a helping hand around the house. Um, so anyway, that, that's how I use my soups and what I do with them. How many soups are you bringing over tomorrow, Lisa? Because I, as you know, have to count them. Um, Marge, it looks like I'll be bringing five quarts of soup, four of today's and one that didn't make it into the bag last week, I think. Um, so let's say five, it might be four, but anyway. That's okay, we'll see what kind of number I get from her. I now, I have now any leftovers are going to So What Else, that other food distribution center. I just don't know if I'm gonna get them there tomorrow because I already have 15, 20, I already have 25 listed, so. So I think we still have a few minutes and everybody's good with what there is their soup just simmering like mine is now or what's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So how about if we get to hear, oh, Julie, welcome back. I hadn't said hi to you yet. Good to see you. How about if people in Pennsylvania can share a little bit about what interested them about this and our meals for you, the thing that are, I mean, for me, food, and cooking for others and sharing meals together is is for me the definition of community. Um, and I'm wondering if that is for you and that's what made this an attractive um, way that you wanted to do something for your community or what what do what does food mean in your lives? Does that mean anything to anybody or not too much? <laughs> no, it does. A lot, a lot of people that are hungry and you know, I don't mm -hmm. think you can ever do too much when it comes to trying to feed those people. So, yeah. um, I just, I think it's a very good cause to. And you're uh, Teresa, to... right? I'm Maureen. Oh, Maureen. I'm sorry. Your phone number is showing. So I didn't know who you were. Thank you, Maureen. I think that's right. It's hard to hear that people are hungry and not think of a way to help. Right. I wish there were more ways. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I know. I don't want to say much because I always say, well, find a way if you want it. <laughs> I, um, I think there are a lot of hungry people around here and it would be nice if we could really do more in that respect. Well, you're doing it today and we welcome you back anytime. I, I, I agree. It's, it's heartbreaking to think of people who are hungry. Deb, mm -hmm. if I can um, just add one Thing. Something that we've done in our group and that may work well in your parishes is that we, um, w when um, any of us have lost a loved one, and I'm sure that your parish has gone through that, members of your community have gone through that, we um, often dedicate um, a session to that person's favorite soup that they cooked um, or that they loved. And then we make that soup and we talk about the person um, and why they love the soup and how the soup was you know, important in, in their life or the life of their family. And it is such a cathartic, uh, I, my mother passed away a couple of years ago and I we made her favorite soup with this group, which is still one of the, it's Chinese winter soup. And <laughs> we call it Chinese winter soup. And um, I think Marge's group makes it periodically with her congregation, it, but it was the most cathartic and meaningful thing for me of all the things we did when my mom passed away honestly. So I just wanted to share that because I thought given that you're a parish and that you're a community, a living community where, um, you know, you I'm sure have lost loved ones, it, it might be something you want to consider for one of your soup events. And honestly, nice. we did talk for a minute about your mom and that soup, but we talked a whole lot for 58 more minutes about your mom and other things that we would never have known about her and <laughs> you know, what, what you and your sister and all of your kids um, have had gotten from and will always remember your mom about. So 
yeah, it was a nice way to um, be in community around Carol when her mom passed away. And we welcome you all to take advantage of that opportunity with us as well. You know, Carol, that's not where I thought you were going with this conversation. Um, I thought you were going to say that when people lose loved ones, that you actually bring suit to them, which is something that I've done. Absolutely. There's that. I have done that too. <laughs> sort of like what Lisa was talking about and her 95-year-old friend Marge, not me. <laughs> I'm only 33. <laughs> What about Marge who just doesn't like Borscht? Marge, right. Does, does the other Marge like Borscht? We don't know. Because Lisa probably didn't cook it either. <laughs> I mean, I'd feel terrible if I showed up. I have a friend, I think she's 92 or 90, something like that, that I bring soup to every week. Um, but I'd feel terrible if I showed up and they didn't like the soup. How would I know, though, you know? <laughs> But I think part of it is like, you know, my friends who are in their 90s, they just, she can't cook. She would love to cook soup, but it's just too much work for her. So, you know, basically they get a lot of takeout, which is a weird way to live because she mm. cooked all the life. Yeah, we have a uh, emergency food bank that we, uh, at our church, that we supply people once a week with um non-perishables and, and some perishables. But this would be nice to be able to make some extra soup to, to give to them. Yeah. You know, periodically. Absolutely. And that's what a lot of the food assistance providers that that us, the people in the um, DC area are giving the, their bulk donations to, they also provide pantry and um, uh, fresh produce and sometimes meat, but this way it's supplemented mm -hmm. with some cooked food, which is nice. Mm -hmm. All right, I am yeah. going to show you what my soup looks like now, Carol. Is that okay? All right, I'm one back. All right, that's okay. Forget, I'm going to unpin no, Carol. I was at my plastic bag um, oh. putting the bill. Here, here is, I didn't get to, to push down oh. that. Oh, okay, there you go. Beautiful. There is my soup. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does yours look like? I'm guessing different. Well, you know, I cut everything small. I've had this like OCD thing, I think. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. That's good. No one will choke. Exactly. I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. I think I'm going to add more broth, I think. I was going to say that's really thick. Yeah. Very yeah. thick. And you know what? I really didn't add much broth at all. I added all that broth that I cooked my beans in. So I didn't even um, measure it. So I'm going to add some more broth now. Mine is delish. Oh, good. That's Marsha I'm listening to, right? Yep. Marsha, you never like your soup when you first do it. You didn't even doctor it up. You just I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I put in some coriander because I love coriander and some more spicy stuff. But Tell us about your spicy stuff. And and is cor does coriander have a health benefit like so many of those do or? Eh? I mean, I guess the same as all the other spices. I mean, they're good for you, but um, mm -hmm. at that one in particular. But mine has mushrooms in it mm -hmm. and which I've just learned is the longevity vitamin, um, ergothionine. I didn't know anything about it, but it's, I've been putting mushrooms in everything now. Okay, so, good. And what, like, so besides coriander, what were your uh, strong flavors that you added? Um, let's see, I put some more of the red pepper flakes. And, um, oh, I put some ginger powder, even though I had loads of ginger, but I love ginger. So I put some more of that in. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's, All right. I, I didn't add too much, a little bit more salt because maybe I might have skimped on the salt to begin with. So added but it. And I do lemon. Lemon, yeah. And I see Terry chewing. What do you think, Terry? <laughs> I love it. I okay. love the lemon. Love the, lemon. the lemon. I think that's yeah. the main flavor. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. got a lot. 
Mm -hmm. And I added a ton of dill. I added four bunches of dill. And even uh, with uh, four uh, bunches, it's not. Oh, no, no, but, and I doubled your recipe because I. Oh, yeah, I that's to, right. That's right. Uh, yeah. So, so I, you know, yeah. Terry, there's, there's a couple ladies on. For those of you who want to feel challenged in Pennsylvania, there's a couple ladies like Terry and also I think mm -hmm. um, uh, the woman who's traveling with me, who double what we do because they want to donate an incredible amount and they, their family wants an incredible amount. So that's just really generous and fantastic. And, and Deb, I'm, I'm about to lose battery on my iPad. So if I disappear, you'll know why. I'll know why. <laughs> well, I'm glad you loved your soup and thank you for joining us today. Anybody else try their soup yet? Anybody from our new friends? I tried mine. I just let, added the lemon and it's delicious. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Good, good. Yeah, it's pretty good, I will say. <laughs> Excellent, Maureen. I'm so glad. Cheyenne, are they gonna? Are they uh, encouraging you to try, inspiring you to make it after we hang up? <laughs> oh, Cheyenne, you didn't make it. No, she didn't make it. But you're muted, Cheyenne. If you can unmute, tell us what you're saying. You're, do you see where the mute button is on your um, computer, Cheyenne? Mm -hmm. We can't hear you. I'm so sorry. It's it's not it's a lot of prep work, but it's actually a very easy soup to make. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We find that a lot. There's some soups when you blend a soup at the end, you can use a food processor to chop all of your um, ingredients. But mm -hmm. if we're not blending it, it takes a little time to sit around and chop. It's true. Oh, somebody. Who's got one of those choppers they want to show our new India? Ah, Julia, I'm going to ping you. We're going to show you one more trick of the trade before we all hang up. So if you're, come and look and see what Julia's showing you if you want another trick to make your soup life easier. Go ahead, Julia. This is what the box looks like. And then, wait. And this is what it looks like and and you and you put the vegetables i don't have the blades in but you put the vegetable here and you go like this and it it smashes down all the vegetables into cubes wow so definitely onions but what else Every, like red peppers it does peppers it does carrots it does it has all different size uh, blades like, ah so you can I have all different blades here. See? Oh, that's fantastic. So potatoes, we do a lot, you know, we not often, but we make potatoes. Uh, right. Let's see. Is Do you even have one small enough for garlic? Uh, um, let me see. I'm going to get I, you started anyway on the garlic, right? I, I have a soup question, please. Okay. Um, can I use cilantro or is cilantro, you think that would screw it up? No, no, is, no, no. People wrote in and loved cilantro. Oh, really? Okay, because I have a little cilantro. I'll add yep, one. cilantro is a good one for this soup. Okay, thanks. I did produce mine. I and did. It comes, with, and it comes with. It comes. Wait, with wait, 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 Julia. One oh. second. Marsha's answering the cilantro Sorry. question. One second, Julia. Yeah. Go ahead, Marsha. It's cilantro falsely, but like you said, not too much because that's a really strong taste. Um, okay. Cilantro, parsley, basil, and mint. I just like. Oh, you did. It. Yeah, and I, it's. I don't know what I did. You know, I couldn't do it again, but I don't think it. Yeah. Okay. You know. Thank you. Okay, Julia. And it comes, it comes with a little booklet that says which vegetable goes with which blade okay. so that you, there's no guesswork. Mm -hmm. so my true. wife, my wife does what's in Yiddish called shit and gifts, throw it in and taste it. So yeah. No these are the same. <laughs> Who knows that? <laughs> you know what, Jerry? You looked like you were, Marsha, he was blurry, blurry in the back, and we didn't see him, but we heard him behind you. <laughs> yeah. It's a ghost. I I, I'm haunting her because I just got back to her. <laughs> Getting yeah, a few last minute items, must have for the fridge. Ah, uh, <laughs> fantastic. Good to see you. All right, everyone, it's six o'clock. Who's feeling ready to say goodbye and your soups are good or who needs a little us to stay on a little longer? Michelle, right, you're good. good. I'm gonna sign off. Thank you so much. All right, Maureen, Thanks, nice to meet you. you. <laughs>
Thanks, Bye. Sue. God bless. Bye. Bye. Everybody good? Bye. Thank you. All right. You all have a great week, and thanks for cooking with us. I hope you do it again. Bye, Joan. Bye, Cheyenne. Bye. Bye, everyone.